Well, I'm excited. My lab, my work area here is now expanding. For Christmas, I got myself a Shape Oco 2. They had them on sale for $100 off, and I picked one up. Now, it's a kit, and they say it takes about 10 to 12 hours to put together. So, I'm going to have to do this over many days because I don't have that much time. But eventually, I'll have a CNC machine to go along with my 3D prints and all my electronics. I hope to do things to cut out different materials here, but also create my own circuit boards for some of the electronics I design. So I'm going to do this over a time lapse. So if you want to see it put together, you can watch this video. Let's get started. The instructions were online, so rather than print them out, I just worked right from my computer. The first step was putting together all the bearings and the pulleys. The next step was to test the electronics. The idea was to connect the motors to the shield, the shield to the Arduino, the Arduino to your computer, and then run the software and make sure everything worked. But there were a lot of other pieces like terminal blocks and long wires you had to cut. The instructions weren't that clear. Okay, so I got the electronics put together and I also got a bunch of bearings put together. And I thought I'd pause and show you this because the instructions for the electronics to test the electronics were so confusing, way too confusing. They talked about all kinds of things that didn't really matter. They talked about wiring up terminal blocks, which you don't need to test. You may need that for assembly depending on how you assemble it. There's like three different ways to do the electronics once you finally assemble it. Then they have this gray, long length of gray wire that you gotta cut in three. But then it says you may not want to cut them into equal threes, depending on how you put it together. Why do I need to do this now just to test it? I, I was so confused. So finally I went back. There's a real nice picture of the schematic, and that's all I did. I looked at the, the picture and said, I'm just going to wire it per the schematic. I plugged the shield into the Arduino like it said. I loaded the software, and here it is. And if you watch, the x-axis is this motor right here. I got it spinning. You can see it. See the flag turning. I put a little tape on it. So I got that going one way or the other. There's the y-axis which are these two. They're going in opposite direction because they both control the y so that's all working. And then the z-axis which actually spins more and spins faster Whoop, I pressed the X. <laughs> now the Z axis, you can see it spins faster, but it's working. So all the electronics are working, so I'm happy. Every, everything is ready to go. I'm going to set this aside. I was just frustrated with the instructions. I, I think part of the 10 to 12 hours is trying to figure out what the hell they're talking about. So if you build one of these yourself, just, just follow the schematic. That's probably all you need to do. All right, on to the next step. Now I build the carriages. The carriages are just plates that have all the bearings bolted in place. And this is where the uh, motors, the stepper motors, attach to form the X, Y, and eventually one for the Z axis as well. It was a lot of steps. I said it would take quite a while, and it was a lot of steps, but it really wasn't that hard. It was just a matter of putting some bolts and screws together. Next was probably the hardest part of this assembly for me, and that was the Z axis. There were a lot of little pieces and you could easily put something on backwards. And there were some pieces that didn't exactly fit together right, so I ended up taking this thing apart several times. Okay, I ran into a problem with the Z-axis. I put everything together, all the pieces, tried to put the rod into this Delron nut and it wouldn't go in. I mean, it go in, but it's crooked and if you wanted to go in crooked you try to straighten it out it was really stiff I'm like what the crap and it turns out this is a Delron nut that's pre-tapped but apparently not well enough a lot of people have had this issue so there were suggestions to re-tap it well you need an 8 millimeter 1.25 millimeter pitch so it's 8 millimeter diameter 1.25 millimeter pitch. I bought an 8 millimeter 1 millimeter pitch which was wrong. I figured it out before I used it. 
So you tap this thing, and now I got it really good. This goes in and out. But I cut a bunch of plastic out of this, so this clearly was not cut good enough. You get the tap in there, so it goes all the way through, and now look. That thing just spins on there free like it's nothing. And that's what you want, because this is what pulls the Z-axis up and down. And there's not a lot of play, you know, that's going to cause error. But look at how smooth that is. So, they don't tell you that in the instructions I saw anywhere. If, they, if it is, they sure said noted in like red in big letters or something. They give you a tap for tapping the shit, these, these uh, bars, but they should give you a tap to tap this guy. So, I highly recommend you do that if you build one of these. I forgot there's one more thing that I didn't like about this, and that's this coupling to the shaft. The coupling is actually too large for the shaft, just slightly. So you have to wrap something around the shaft in order to be able to tighten this tight enough that it grabs. And it's it's not off by a lot, it's off by just a little. So I bought this shim stock which was 0.8 um, inches, 0.08 Point, I can't remember. It's really, really thin. They said use a uh, maybe metal off uh, uh, aluminum can, which this was really, really close, but it turned out to be too thick. So the only thing I found that worked really good, electrical tape. I wrapped it super tight like you do on a pipe, pipe threads. And then, and then I shoved it in, and I was able to get this thing tight. I, I can't move it. So... I think I've got it good. I don't like the fact that I use tape on this, but it allowed me then to clamp it down pretty pretty good. And it's an Allen head nut, so you know I think I got it clamped pretty good. And then this basically goes on to the motor, which once I take that tape off, goes on to the motor, and then that drives your z-axis. So think I got that but that's another flaw they, sh they should have a coupling that fits the shaft you know what I mean so now with all those fixes figured out I could go back to putting the z-axis together hopefully for the final time and having taken it apart and put it back together a few times it was a little bit easier but it still was time consuming so I put this all together got it all built and tested and I could turn the motor and it would work so now I went to work in the gantry, and that's when the aluminum rails were used. And you have to tap the holes inside these things so you can put screws in. That was really tedious. It was not hard, but it just took some time. And then there was a whole bunch of pieces I had to get together, and I started to get confused on which piece went where. So this wasn't as easy as I'd, as I'd hoped, but it still went together pretty good. And it felt like I was finally building this thing instead of just pieces. You could see it start to come together. And then the tough part, squaring things up. I had two different squares going. I had the gantry with the z-axis moving back and forth, but it was stiff. So I had to adjust these, this upper rail multiple times to get it, but I finally got it done. And here it is, my completed Shapeoko. I've got the Dremel tool that comes with it mounted. I had my own bit and I got the wiring all done. I'll probably improve this a little bit, but I put some tie wrap material so it would form this shape both here and in the back. And that way it doesn't flex the wire. But everything's put together. And then the electronics here I mounted on the side, which was an option. And I 3D printed a bracket. I found a bracket on Thingiverse and then I improved it to give it more space under here to let air flow because this can get hot I guess but it ended up cracking the the mounts so I got some improvement ideas I want to work on that but this will be a separate uh, YouTube video just to show you what I did to make this bracket and I actually tested this first without the the 
clone Dremel. I actually used a big Sharpie here and I printed on a large priority mailbox because I could only get this to go so low and then fit the priority mailbox opened up and, and so it was kind of a distance off so that way this could actually print on it. I'll show you that at the end. But basically this was a a great project. It took me probably about 10 hours of time over many days because I couldn't put all the time in constantly. And I had a lot of issues with the z-axis here. But I got everything working good. The uh, tool that you use to tap these rods, the tap tool, I ended up just using it up here so now I can manually raise and lower the z-axis. They make um, a special handle that you can add for the top here to do that, but I had the tools, so when I put it on there, it's free. I got to figure out a way to, to fix this too, um, this cord. I want to figure out a better way, probably some kind of cabling to hold that up so it's out of the way, it doesn't, doesn't get tangled. But overall, I think it's a great little CNC. I had a few issues with setting up the software because I didn't read the instructions properly. That's all my fault. Once I got that fixed, this thing's been cutting pretty good. I've actually cut a little wood. I'll show that separately. But for right now, I'll show you the test run that I ran with the marker and the box. And I'll finish the video with that. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not typical 3D prints that I do, but it just shows there's other things I'm going to do with my channel. So with that, I'll send it off to the final test.